It's Create Day, my friends. Today we are transforming plain pots into works of art. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. My first project will be with this larger terracotta pot that I got at the thrift store. And then I have these two others that I just found around my home. I'm using Dixie Bell's mineral chalk paint in the color putty to do a base coat on this larger pot. I'm keeping this one pretty simple, so this will be the only paint color that I use on this one. I'm using IOD sunflower mold to make a rather large sunflower to put on the front of the pot. I have found that using a some type of scraper like this one that I have here and working your way out from the center helps these with these larger pieces especially to get that back nice and flat. I put some cornstarch in the mold first and that really helps with this coming right out in a perfect little sunflower. And then I can just go around the edges with a brush dipped in water to help smooth all that out. To adhere it to the pot, I'm going to use my Gorilla Wood Glue. I just spread that out all over, making sure I get it all the way out to those edges. And then I can just place it in the center of my pot and press down very gently on all the edges to make sure that it's on there and I don't have any little pieces of the outside sticking up. For the second coat of paint, I'm using the same color called Putty. And I'm just adding a little bit of baking soda to it to help add a little bit of texture. I did not want a lot of texture, but I just like having something that, you know, just a little bit to go, it makes it easier to go around those edges and kind of fill in any small gaps that might be there. I started out with a larger round brush and then I switched to this one that has more of a pointed tip on it so that I could get it into all those details around that sunflower and on it. When that was dry, I'm going in with my clear wax just on the sunflower because I'm going to do some antiquing wax and I want to work on the sunflower first and then do the rest of the pot. So I'm applying this around the sunflower so that I can do the antiquing wax around the edges as well. This will help me have more control over that. So I just wipe it back and then I can start applying the antiquing wax. I'm working in small sections, applying it into all those details, and then using a rag to wipe off the excess. I'll be leaving a list of all the items I use on these projects in the description box, and I will provide links whenever possible. I get my IOD products from two different stockists. One is Vonda at ThePaintedHeirloom.com. I'll try to leave her link in the description box. And the other one is a local stockist located in Orland, California, and that is called Studio Milan. So if you're in the Chico Willows Orland area, you might want to check that out. She also carries the Dixie Bell paints. Here's how it looks so far. And next I'm going to apply my clear wax working in sections again, brushing it on, wiping it off, and then going in with the antiquing wax, just like I did on the sunflower. Now that I have the entire exterior cover, coated, even the bottom, I'm going to start with my white wax. Again, it's the same procedure, just brushing it on and wiping it off with a rag. And I tell you, you got to have a lot of rags on hand if you do a lot of waxing because you just go through them like crazy. Like once you get a lot of wax on that rag, you got to switch it out to a fresh one. Now when I get to the sunflower, I'm doing a much lighter coat of this. I just want to catch most of the high spots and not really get too much of this down into all the details. I want that antique wax to still be peeking through. Now 
Now, I'm not a real fan of my white wax. It's kind of gritty and chunky instead of being creamy. So I use a stiff, small brush to wipe out any extra that gets caught in all the details. I'm using the clear wax to coat the inside of the pot. And with that, this project will be done. There will be pictures at the end of the video of all the finished projects. For my next pot, I'm going to use some black chalk paint to cover up this stain that was on the inside and outside bottom of the pot. It's just easier to go over the black chalk paint with a lighter color than to use the lighter color to try and cover up a, a stain. I don't know why it works that way, it just does. So I'm going in with cottage white chalk paint to paint the just the bottom section of my pot. I'm stopping where that rim is because I'm going to paint the rim in summer porch chalk paint. And I'm doing that on the inside as well. But I end up having to change that no matter, um, it just seemed like how many, I would have had to do, I don't know how many coats to get complete coverage over that black. I don't know why it works with white, but it doesn't work with yellow. And so things were bleeding through on the yellow paint. So I ended up going back and painting that black on the inside. Now I'm going to do some decoupage. I got these pretty little sunflower napkins off of Amazon. I will leave the link in the description box. And they were three ply, so I had to remove the bottom one and then the, the second layer didn't want to come off easily, so I put a piece of scotch tape on there to get it started and then pulled it away. And you can see how on this layer, the second layer, has um, still an imprint of that design on there. So I'm going to save that in case I can use it on another project. And the next napkin I'm using is also from Amazon. And this one came off, the top ply just came off real easy. And it too has that imprint onto the second layer. So I'm going to be saving that as well. Now I'm just going to cut these into the four little pieces and then I will be using a paintbrush or actually my water pen. You can use a paintbrush dipped in water to cut out the sections that I want to use. I'm just laying it on here to see what parts I want to keep and which ones I want to cut off. So I'm going to be just adding things in um, randomly here to cover the pot, I'm, I didn't want to do this like in just one big piece wrapped around the pot. I wanted to make it more custom looking. So with the water, you can just easily tear this napkin away and it has a nice organic edge. So I just keep cutting out pieces until I've got enough to cover my pot. And now I want to incorporate some of the elements from the other napkin on this. So I'm cutting out some of the butterflies. And then there's some texting on there that says Botanica Lepidoptera. So I want to add that to the front of my pot. I'm using Mod Podge to apply these. And I just get them situated on there and then go in. And I like to do like this larger piece half at a time. So I brush on my Mod Podge and get that laid down into place. And then once the whole thing is glued down, I go over the edges, not the entire image. I just go around the edges with the Mod Podge because I will cover the entire pot with the Mod Podge after everything's applied. Yeah. 
So I just start adding in all my little elements wherever I think they will look good. You can just really have fun with this at this point. There's no right or wrong. Just do whatever is pleasing to your eye. And now I'm just applying that coat of Mod Podge over all of my images. So now I'm showing you how this, the paper that the butterflies and the botanica was on, it's got a grayish background to it. And I want to blend in the rest of my pot with that. So I'm going to use these home decor chalk paint colors, Maui Sand, Castle, and Parisian gray. So I grabbed a couple of my small round stiff brushes and I am dabbing into the paint on my plate that's off to the side there that you can't see starting with the darker gray Maui sand and I'm it's a dry brush stippling effect. I have very little paint on my brush less is more. If you get too much you can't really take it off. So I start with the dark gray, then I go in with the lighter gray. And lastly, I end up adding Castle, which is more of a brown gray. And that seemed to work really well to give the effect that this same color tones that was on that particular napkin um, is all over the entire pot. You can see the little bit that I've done there. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue that process into all those white areas. It was a little bit time consuming and tedious, but um, that's how we do it here at Linda Diane Designs. Don't keep it simple. I wanted to blend in the edges of the rim around that pot, so I'm going to use those same three colors, dry brushing, but just in a more of a regular brushing motion all three colors on the bottom of the rim and on the top as well. Now I'm applying my clear wax on that entire rim so that I can go in with some white wax and still have some control over the amount I get on there. And just keep in mind that these waxes seal the project so you don't have to do anything else after this to seal it. And since the bottom portion is covered in Mod Podge, the entire piece will be sealed when I'm done with this. While I'm waiting for the wax to dry, I've got a strip of drop cloth here and my stays on ink in jet black. And I have these little bee stamps from IOD. It's from the Birds and Bees stamp. And I just picked out two different sizes so I could alternate them in different directions along the length of this piece of drop cloth. And so I'm doing the larger one first leaving a space in between so that I can go back in with the smaller one and fill in those spaces. Now here's where I got that bleed through I had mentioned and so I use my uh, black chalk paint to paint the inside of this pot up to the rim. Yeah. 
I'm using my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo just around the edges of this piece of drop cloth so we can add a little bit of age to it. And I'm just using my mini round ink blending tool for this. I got it from Amazon and I can leave a link in the description box. And I also decided when I had this ink out that I wanted to add some to the top of my pot. It was a little too gray. So I just rubbed some of that over the top of my pot. I let it dry for a while, but not long enough apparently because when I went to go back in with my wax to seal it, it was coming off onto my finger and getting transferred onto the lid of my um, wax. So I I just I didn't even wipe it off. I just set it aside. I cleared I cleaned the lid off, but on the pot I just set it aside and let it dry without wiping it back. I wanted it to um, be good and dry and stay on there. So now since I had that black in the inside of my pot, I decided to go with some white wax in there to kind of tone it down and make it more cohesive with the rest of this pot. Then I just tied my little drop cloth on there and um, trimmed the edges, gave it some dovetails, and then I just added the ink to those fresh cuts. And that's how this one turned out. My next pot is getting a coat of cottage white chalk paint. I'm using the IOD Trimmings 1 mold to make a couple of castings to go around the rim of this pot. And again, I dusted it with cornstarch first and I'm using my scraper to work from the center out to get a nice flat back. I'm using my Gorilla wood glue to attach it to the rim of the pot. I made my second casting and then I lined it up with the first one. They have these little um, cut out edges on the end so you can match them together which I think is super cool. Of course it didn't match up on the other end perfectly but I was able to just take my X-Acto knife and trim it away so that I could get it to fit to where it it's really not visible to the naked eye. It, um, wasn't that hard to do. So once I was satisfied with how I had trimmed it away in there, I go ahead and apply the Gorilla Wood Glue and just Press that down and it'll just look like it was one piece. For paint, I'm using Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Patina. I did two coats of this over the entire pot, but I did have to go in with a small brush to do like a third coat around all the details of that casting. And next up, I'm using Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze. I'm going to brush this along the, all the details of that casting, wiping off the excess. I just want this to sit down into the details. Once that was done, I did the rest of the pot all the way around the outside and on the inside as well.
Now I'm going to use this script stamp that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to be using my Stays on Ink and Timber Brown. Before I did this on the pot, I stamped it up and put it on a piece of tissue paper just so I could see what it looked like and see how it was going to fit on there. Make sure I like it first. But I used like the whole stamp the first time and because of the curved surface, it made that it just wrapped around it kind of wonky, which wasn't, I, I didn't like that. So from there on, I inked up either the the first section or the second section or the third section of the stamp and did it that way. I was much happier with it that way. So then I gave the whole thing a coat of the clear wax, and then I will go in after that with the white wax. So I noticed when I did the white wax that it was starting to smudge my stamps, which I didn't understand. That didn't happen with the clear wax. I don't know if you can see it's kind of smudging it. So I set it aside and let it dry a little longer, thinking maybe the ink wasn't set up. But that stays on ink is dry really fast, so I don't know what was going on there. Um, so I just concentrated on that casting. You know, I'm picking out the bits of white wax that I don't want in there. And just waited a while before I went back in and finished the um, other part. And it seemed to help a little, but I, I'm i still just like, I, I don't know what caused that. So then I did the white wax on the inside. And we are almost done. So here's where I'm just going back and trying to do the outside again. It's a little bit better, but boy, and, and it kind of turned it more of a purpley color too. This is like a first for me. It was really strange. So anyway, I just went with it, you know, what are you going to do? And I went ahead and did the wax on the bottom. And now we can go on to the final step, which is adding some rose gold alchemy art metallic wax on the details of that casting. I chose to use a brush instead of my finger for this. I wanted a really light touch. So I just get a little bit on the paper towel and kind of do a dry brush over the tops of all these details. This, oh my gosh, I love this. It turned out so pretty. That rose gold was the perfect complement for this color. Then I added some more of it along that bottom rim where the casting meets the pot. And I did some on the top. And then I felt like the bottom needed a little something too to make it more grounded. So I went ahead using my finger. I just did that along that bottom edge. And now before our final project, I want to show you a couple of my viewers' creations. This one is from Sharon Jack. I shared some of her photos in my last video and this is from my sweet cousin Carrie. Um, she made these for Easter and I think they're just adorable. I absolutely love seeing what you guys create. Please send me pictures of your creations to my Gmail and I will share them in my videos. This last project is just a quick overview of doing some garden markers. I'm using these super jumbo craft sticks that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I cut the ends down so that they would stick into the soil better. And it's very simple, just white chalk paint, decoupage on some napkins, sand that off, do the other coat of decoupage, and then antique the edges with some ink. I sped up the drawing time by using my little heat tool. I will put a link to this in the description box in case you're interested. 
My next video is going to be on different types of garden markers, so be on the lookout for that. These were super simple and super quick, and now we can take a look at how everything turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. But most importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.